Thank you very much, uh, General Otieno. This is a salient milestone in our historic journey of national transformation. The event by itself is extraordinary and the venue is significant in a couple of critical ways. The commissioning of MV Uhuru II is another encouraging achievement which demonstrates the rapid maturity of this sector and of our national shipbuilding industry and highlights its dynamic capacity to undertake different important assignments and deliver various types of vessels in this emerging space. In May, I presided over the re rededication of KNS, I'm a Kenya Navy ship, Shupavu, the first naval ship to undergo a midlife ref uh, refit in Kenya, which proved the capacity of Kenya shipyards to undertake complex engineering tasks requiring specialized scientific and technological expertise. Today, we are commissioning a wholly newly built merchant marine vessel, once again demonstrating the ability of the Kenya shipyards to build, repair, and maintain ships for local, regional, and possibly international operators. The work of building MV Uhuru II and <clears throat> upgrading the Kisumu shipyard has been undertaken by Kenyan professionals in a project which provided many young people with practical shipbuilding skills through apprenticeship and on the job training and was completed within 24 hours, 24 months, sorry, and well within its budget. I must congratulate my predecessor, President Uhuru Kenyatta, for his foresight in coming up with this shipyard uh, refurbishment. When one morning he asked me for us to visit Kisumu and see what the military could do, when we came here, it was a heap of dirt, wreckage, and old buildings. To see what we are seeing here today is phenomenal. And I must say, both President Uhuru Kenyatta and the leadership of our military, with a lot of foresight, drove this program to where we are today. When I took over office, it is among the first decisions I had to make when the leadership of the military asked me directly whether this project should continue and whether it was a priority of the new administration. And I confirmed to them that it should just not continue, that it should be accelerated. For these remarkable feats, I commend the entire Kenya Shipyards team for once again exhibiting admirable professionalism and the highest standard of skillful work. I am proud to note that the Kenya Shipyards is quickly emerging as a leader in high quality shipbuilding for our local and regional needs. Consequently, the Kenya Shipyards have been contracted to repair and maintain ships for government ministries, departments, and agencies, including the Kenya Coast Guard Services, the Kenya Ports Authority, the Kenya Maritime Authority, the Kenya Marine Fisheries Research Institute, and private operators in the Indian Ocean coast as well as this Lake Victoria. There is no doubt, therefore, that the Kenya Shipyards is emerging as a center of shipbuilding and maritime excellence and is poised to become Kenya's strategic anchor in the development of our blue economy and all the resources associated with it.
This event is therefore important as a critical component of the national agenda to catalyze the growth of the blue economy by channeling technology as well as local and foreign direct investment into a diverse industrial ecosystem with distinct clusters assembled around shipbuilding. To the extent that our bottom-up economic transformation agenda recognizes the blue economy as a vital component of a sustainable national economic growth strategy, shipbuilding occupies an essential place in national development. The place where this event takes, uh, takes place is also highly important. We can all agree today that the Nyanza region is going to play a leading role in the bottom-up economic transformation agenda, not only because it typifies our national potential as a country, but also because it is endowed with the capacity to make unique contributions to growth and development. The region is an undisputed leader in the production of crops like cotton, rice, oilseed, sorghum, sweet potatoes, and its famous group, uh, crop, sugar. We have invested in mechanization and extension services together with the revival of irrigation projects. Just two weeks ago, the cabinet made a decision to contract another 40 million US dollar facility that would help expand the Lower Nzoia facility that covers both Siaya and Busia to extend an extra 20,000 acres of rice growing under irrigation in the two counties. We all invested in mechanization, as I said, and extension services together with the revival of irrigation projects and collaborating with county governments to support farmers through the provision of subsidized inputs. Yesterday, again, I was in Migori, and I did explain to Kenyans in Migori that next year we will equally be expanding the Lower Kuja irrigation program from the current 5,000 acres to 19,000 acres in the program that we have for next year. Again, to expand our production of rice in Kenya that currently we have very serious deficit. And in fact, it is draining most of our foreign exchange earnings. This is why we are confident that an economic renaissance powered by agro-industrial revival is underway in the region. This will certainly lead to a renewed vibrancy of our ancient lakeside market, Kesumo or Osumo, where the communities of our region gathered to conduct butter trade of highly needed commodities. Let me, I was telling Professor Nyang Nyong that uh, the word Osumo, which means exchange of uh, um, products and, and, uh, and, and goods, butter trade in, 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 in essence, means the same thing for the communities in this region. Kesumo means the same thing as Osumo. Kesumo in the Kalenjin language and Osumo in the language of this uh, region. So we're all, you know, uh, it's, it's quite a, a, an experience. Kesumo has not just been a center of activity for local communities, it has also served as a key regional port city which drives and is driven by activities within the Lake Victoria, the heartbeat of our East African region. Lake Victoria plays a primary role in our region's blue economy in terms of fisheries and the provision of vital transportation links between Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, keeping our regional community cohesive and in motion. Through its shipbuilding, 
maintenance and operations capacity, the Kisumu shipyard is set to provide indispensable support for regional economic takeoff of the Lake Victoria Basin by facilitating fisheries and maritime transport. By driving the regional economy around the Lake Victoria, the shipyards will therefore contribute to regional integration and the economic transformation of our region. Again, with our Ministry of Blue Economy, along this Lake Victoria from Busia all the way to Migori, we are establishing infrastructure, fishing infrastructure, landing sites along this uh, uh, lake region, two landing sites in Busia, two landing sites in Siaya, two landing sites here in Kisumu, in a place called Asat and in a place called Ogal here in Kisumu, two landing sites in Homa Bay, and another two landing sites in Migori, including in a place called Sori, where I visited uh, sometime in the past. And this fishing infrastructure, complete with landing sites, cold rooms, common user facilities for processing, will not only enhance the economic activity around fishing in this region, but it will also add to our pool of opportunities, both for commerce and for jobs, and significantly contribute to our food security by making sure that we have more food from the resource we have in uh, Lake Victoria. I encourage all county governments within the Lake Victoria Basin to identify and develop economic opportunities directly and indirectly arising from the shipyard activities and related infrastructure. As we go forward, I encourage the National Treasury and the National Shipyards to explore a public-private partnership model that will expand the shipyard's capital base and enhance its capacity to undertake larger commercial ventures in order to make a stronger contribution to national revenues, to create more job opportunities for our young people, and to transfer more skills and competencies, and also enable big companies to work with us in technology transfer. Technology and skills transfer is critical for the development of competitive capacity in such complex technical fields as shipping. The Kenya Shipyards has benefited immensely from the technical support made possible by its collaboration with Damen Koringer during the construction of MV Uhuru II. And as has been said, we have two representatives here. Maybe I will ask the gentlemen to stand up. We applaud them. A round of applause for these two good people. Their contribution has been immense. Thank you very much. The success of this project and the standard of the vessel we are about, we've just commissioned, is an excellent testament of the technology transfer and capacity building made possible by this uh, collaboration. As the MV Uru 2 sails the waters of Lake Victoria, it will be a symbol of our region's collective dream of a brighter future made possible through partnership and collaboration, a reminder that our journey towards economic transformation will require consistency and high standards and proof that we can deliver above expectations. That is exactly what General, uh, my good General Oteno and team have demonstrated to us. <laughs> Let me also congratulate uh, the people of this region that today in uh, the cabinet discussions that we had in this uh, port city of Kisumu, we, have, we also received as part of the ongoing process of uh, the reforms in our sugar industry. Cabinet was briefed of the report that today the certificate from Parliament was submitted to the National Treasury for the ultimate write-off of 117 billion debts that have for a long time saddled 
the sugar mills, the five sugar mills in this region, namely Sony, Chemelil, Moroni, Miwani, um, Mumias, and also Nzoya. Finally, we now have all the debts behind those companies. And these companies are now poised for new investment and new transformation going into the future. In that same report that we received today, government will now uh, be adjusting the budget. Hopefully by Friday this week or next week, we will be pre presenting to parliament um, a new budget proposal that will make it possible for 1.7 billion shillings to be made available to these five mills to be able to pay farmers, farmer arrears that have been outstanding for as long as four or five years. <laughs> what is happening also will give now, will set the stage for a leasing program that will see these uh, factories and the mills and the um, nuclear estates being used to transform and to provide the mechanism for us to turn around these facilities. And as I made a commitment that there will be no privatization of any part and there will be um, the land that was contributed by communities and by regions will continue to be land that is um, that will be for the communities under the county and that this time round the program will also make it possible for communities using either counties or any other agreed framework for them to benefit from the lease of the facilities both the nuclear estate and the mills that will be made available to private sector to make sure that they can use it appropriately. It is my intention that unlike in the past where nuclear estate and all the facilities put together by government are made available and they have no benefit, no accruing benefit to communities and to counties. That is going to change. Today also we went through um, the final process of concluding the Gogo Dam end project that will generate additional 8.6 megawatts. And today, again, we approved an investment of 30 million US dollars in that project. And we have given a timeline that this should be complete in the next 24 months, not just to increase the contribution of energy from the western part of Kenya, but also make it much more predictable and reliable. This again, this investment will make it possible to stabilize our grid and to make sure that we have stable power for both household and manufacturing requirements. Among as many other things that uh, we did, is also to agree on how we are going to host both all the tournaments that we have, starting from AFCON to CHAN to SECAFA and to all the others, and to spread all these facilities across Kenya. I know Professor Anyang Nyong is on record as uh, uh, making his position no, known as to where is the place of Kisumu in hosting uh, these facilities? I want to confirm you, to you, Professor, that we have taken into account the place of Kisumu in hosting at least some of the uh, tournaments that we have spread across the country. Um, with those many remarks, ladies and gentlemen, I wish MV Uhuru II its captain and crew, fair winds and following seas as they do their part to keep the engine of our regional economy running. Thank you very much. God bless you and God bless our great country.
Mheshimiwa Rais niombe tubaki tukiwa tumesimama kwa wimbo wa taifa. Wale ambao wamevalia kofia zisizo rasmi tafadhali naomba tuweze kuzivua. Wimbo wa taifa. basi niombe tuweze kuketi mheshimiwa rais anapoondoka